Well, it's great to be here. First off, I want to recognize our college intern, Johnny Lappy from the University of Dallas. It's great people here in the room. I want to share with you one of the Republican Party insiders when they tried to talk me out of being with you today. I want to share with you how I responded. <laughs> I'm going to speak to our ICRC. There are a lot of committed core activists in ICRC who form the hardworking base of this party. Many of them generate the most robust ideas. They file the FOIAs and they hold the, uh, the corrupt Illinois political class accountable. These people deserve dialogue and respect. They have earned it. I appreciate them. By not engaging them in the gainful two-way conversation, we disengage from the debate, and our party loses energy at the ballot box. <coughs> they will fire me up, and I plan to fire them up for the November election. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I think fundamentally I'm excited to be here because... You and I understand the traditions and the legacies of our country. We're Americans and we do impossible things. It's George Washington and the American Revolution when it was entirely impossible to beat the greatest army ever assembled in the history of the world. It's the Civil War when our American president, Abraham Lincoln from Illinois, he kept the Union together. That was impossible. In World War II, it was impossible to beat the Nazi war machine. It was impossible. And you and I remember this in the 1970s Capitalism was dead, and communism was the path forward, and Ronald Reagan ended communism without firing a shot. It was impossible. We're Americans, and we do impossible things. We have to do it again. This is the third point in the history of our country where the American experiment is in jeopardy, and those aren't my words. It's Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels' words. You and I understand that the traditions and values and the fundamental underpinnings of the greatest nation ever conceived in the history of the world is in jeopardy. We fundamentally understand that you and I have been given the greatest gift in the last 5,000 years of human history that was given to us by our founders. And it's a constitution that for the first time ever, never repeated again, it's a limit on the power of government and it empowers we the people. We have to defend that in our time and it's a privilege to do so. I believe that what that means to you and I, the limit on government and the power of the people, what that means to you and I is we enforce the Constitution and we enforce it at the ballot box. So the Supreme Court, the nine justices, and we wanted them to rule our way the other day, and at first glance it doesn't seem like, like they did, but we've been given a gift. We don't like the court to decide things for us. We like we the people to decide it on referendum at the ballot box, and that's the opportunity in November to not only oust Barack Obama from the White House, but to preserve the fundamental underpinnings of federalism and our principles and values on referendum at the ballot box in November. <laughs> Think about our state constitution. We actually have a balanced budget clause. We've backed up hundreds of billions of dollars worth of debt because you and I haven't enforced the Constitution at the ballot box and elected a better political class. Article 1, Section 9 of the Federal Constitution, as written, says that a periodic reporting of revenues and expenses should be provided to the people. And I believe, as you do, that in the Internet age, in the electronic age, what that means is open the books. Amen. So when we did that last fall, we posted the pay and pensions of virtually every single public employee at every level of Illinois government, and we put that right up at OpenTheBooks.com. And in the first seven months of that, nearly 100,000 people came to the website and they rendered 1.7 million questions about pay and pensions. And that proved to me and you that the people are hungry for the information. So when we opened the books, what did we find? 
where we found 57 village and city managers here in Illinois out earning every governor in the 50 states. <coughs> the guy in Palatine on total compensation as a village manager had a total cap of $350,000, and that paled in comparison to the three-year contract of the guy in the city of Joliet, which was a million dollars, and we issued the big dog report just uh, about a month ago at For the Good of Illinois. Bruno Barron issued that, and the number one city and village manager in the entire state is in the small town of Grays Lake, Illinois, population 20,000, and he's got a base salary alone of $259,000. School district treasurers are out earning our state treasurer. And we highlighted one of those that last two years ago he made $163,000. And then last year he made $296,000. And the school board president has resigned and there's an independent law firm looking into his compensation because the board wasn't notified. And that's the power of transparency to expose and then dispose. <laughs> when we opened the books, what did we find? We found park district administrators out earning the state director of parks, and we found legal corruption within, our, within every single one of our state five state pension plans. We found the top union bosses in the country were clouded and muscled in to our teachers' retirement system the second highest teacher pension in Illinois state, te state teacher retirement history goes to Reginald Weaver. And he taught for 30 years on the south side in the town of Harvey, and after 30 years his pension was around $60,000. And then he went to Washington, D.C. He became president of the National Teachers Union for six years, and he retired on an Illinois state teacher pension of $20,200 a month. And legislation was quickly jacked in a tepid version of that passed in Springfield. And again, that is the power of transparency to expose and dispose of corrupt practices. When we opened the books, what did we find? Well, we found, we started adding extra tranches of data to open the books this spring. The vendor spending. We posted every single school district's vendor spending, their checkbook, all the way back to 2006. So very quickly, when I tested my local data in Hinsdale, I found in Hinsdale, since 2006, we had spent $2.1 million on taxi cab rides. Mm -hmm. And we published that, and I got a nasty note from my school board president. <laughs> and he said, Adam, your credibility is at stake. You have to tell the local taxpayers, the local property taxpayers in our town, yes, the number's right, and it probably disgusts them, he wrote, but they didn't pay for that. Eighty cents on every dollar was reimbursed by state and federal taxpayers. <laughs> <laughs> so now downstate's living. They're paying for our taxi cabs in Hinsdale. And we quickly studied the state. And since 2006, $50 million was spent by a small handful of school districts using a small number of taxi cab vendors. And we filed FOIAs around that, and we've determined what we think <coughs> is corruption and possible law breaking. Only six schools actually had a contract that was negotiated, the rest paid for individual rides. When we opened the books, what did we find? We found these problems aren't in northern Illinois, they're systemic to the entire state. There are too many units of government with too many public employees with the trajectory of their pay that's out of control with no accountability. We call that a legalized money laundering scheme. And that's the definition of Illinois government at all levels. Here's an example from southern Illinois. In the tiny town of Heron, Illinois, population 5,000, 45 miles from the Kentucky border, the superintendent has a base salary alone of $178,000, and he out-earns 49 out of the 50 governors. In DuPage County, the county seat of DuPage County, historically it's one of the most red, rock-ribbed Republican counties in the country, 
and Milton Township, which comprises Wheaton, the county seat, the top ten township employees clean off over one million dollars of total compensation from taxpayers. When we asked the supervisor to provide the job descriptions, the time cards, and the job activity reports, and the personnel files, he could not, he did not know where the personnel files were located, and he has admitted that none of that documentation existed in the ads. Last week, you're probably aware, I opened the books on an Illinois state agency. And this is what we found. That for two full weeks at the end of February, culminating on March 3rd, that the Illinois Student Assistance Commission literally functioned as the outreach arm for Rainbow Push Coalition in Chicago, as they required some, coordinated all, and paid for most of 76 state employees to attend the Saturday Forum at Rainbow Push Coalition where Nancy Pelosi endorsed Jesse Jackson Jr. in a contested primary 17 days before the primary election. <coughs> the Attorney General will not prosecute public corruption. We have 102 counties here in Illinois and the state's attorneys are not prosecuting public corruption. We've come to learn, and I'm sure people like Lenny Jarrett have come to learn, that when you uncover corruption, nobody has your back. That's why I'm privileged to speak to you guys today. We have each other's back. I need your help, you need my help. And never underestimate what a core, committed, hardworking, principled band of brothers and sisters can do to save a state and save a country, and we must do it again. You and I, we fundamentally understand that this is the third moment in the history of this country where the American experiment is in jeopardy. You and I understand the gift that we've been given as a people in the last 5,000 years of human history of a constitution that empowers us and limits the power of government Thank you for having me speak, and I'm open for questions if we have time for some of those. Just a quick one on open books. Uh, Illinois Tollway, <coughs> excuse me, Illinois Tollway Authority. I, I haven't. E <laughs> is that any? Is it possible to open those books? That's my question. Absolutely, they're a public body. It's subject to the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, very soon at OpenTheBooks.com, I'm told that nearly every single dime spent by every unit of government at all levels in the entire state paying pensions and the checkbook will be online for citizen review. And let's talk about what that will mean for us. If you have XYZ law firm, you will be able to search across school districts, across townships, across counties, up to the state, city of Chicago, Cook County, and you will be able to determine relatively rapidly how much that law firm takes from taxpayers in total. We are literally stripping the covers off the combine. Yes, uh, it's on display. Johnny has uh, one of our iPads here, and he's picking up the uh, U46 superintendent. Um, and he showed me this when I walked in today. He's been there three years. He used to make 163000 and three years later he makes approximately $135,000. Um, that's the power of the mobile app. No matter where, it's a free download at iTunes for those of you that have an Apple uh, mobile product, an iPad or an iPhone. Uh, no matter where you are in Illinois, it searches your coordinates off the satellite, GPS, determines where you're at, and in a radius of your choosing, five miles up to 50 miles, it'll take the top public salaries in that radius and it'll put it right on your iPad. And then when you click on them, you get up to a 10-year, 11-year <coughs> salary history that's also graphed. 
So what do you find when you do that? You find 60 to 100 percent increases of all public employees. Now census data will tell you over the last 10 years in the private sector, you and I, our wages have gone up 27 percent. The trajectory of public pay is the parasite that is destroying the host. Without you and I enforcing the Constitution this November at ballot box, there's nothing that will stand in the way of the next 10 years of that trajectory continuing again at 60 to 100 percent increases. And as you know, the salaries drive the pension. Yeah, um, you were talking about uh, opening the books and transparency. Uh, I'm from the Dixon area. The comptroller for the city of Dixon, Rita Cromwell, is accused of stealing over $50 million from the city uh, before the incident broke. Uh, according to the Illinois Policy Institute, the Dixon had one of the lowest transparency uh, websites in the state of Illinois. Uh, they are making improvements. I wanted your reaction to her case. I think Dixon proves that what you and I have been talking about the last four years is spot on. We need adversarial auditing. We need forensic audits on a rolling basis of every unit of government in the entire state. <laughs> 21 rubber stamp audits and they can steal $53 million. We need adversarial auditing of the public sector in this state. It will never lose money. Frank. I had the opportunity to meet you when you announced your candidacy or shortly around the time you had announced your candidacy for governor uh, year 10. Uh, probably like many of the people in this room were hoping you'd run for something in 2012. I'm not sure you're in a position to announce what that is yet. Uh, 2014 read it. Uh, but you know, certainly if you're, if you're willing to talk about what you're considering or if you're considering anything, uh, I would love to hear it. I'm sure others would as well. Well, I think everything has to be on the table. So here's the decision. You know. Each one of us has a role to play. Very sincerely, I'm trying to determine what my role is. And each one of us should take that very seriously, personally as well. So here's the decision that, that I'm trying to make. In 2014, am I the candidate or do I help champion the cause? Both roles are critical. I can see myself in both roles. I just have to determine what my what my role is in 2014. I enjoyed the race. I enjoyed your support and your endorsement in, uh, in 2014. It meant a lot to me. It was a leap of faith. You had to take a leap of faith that a guy who never run for office before, that when he started out, less than five elected officials had ever called him while he was running for the top job in the state. That was a leap of faith to endorse me. But I understood why you endorsed me. It was never about me. It was about the proven policy solutions, the 15,000 words that we put online and we proudly ran on all over this state, and together we helped coalesce and build a movement. <laughs> you know how seriously I took my promises. If you remember, it was the phrase, every dime online in real time. And hopefully over the next four to six months, not only will we have every dime of state spending online, will have every dime spent of all units of government in the entire state on line.
know, who's in the right person, who's in whose pocket. I mean, how can it be about, you know, I'm a conservative, I care about my state, you know, um, and I want, this is my party. And when, when can it, when can we turn it back to that so you know who's in whose pocket now? Right. So here's the value of proposition over the last couple of decades with the <coughs> Illinois Republican Party and the National Party. The value proposition is taxpayer, we've got your back, right? I mean, that's what separates Republicans from Democrats, you know, on a state and national party issue. It, it, it's been that value proposition. So when Republicans violate that, that value proposition, the best thing that we can do, in fact, I'll submit to you that we've got an obligation to do it, the best thing we can do is to take out bad Republicans. And during the Republican primary season, that's exactly what our PAC, For the Good of Illinois PAC, was very successful at doing. Expose and dispose, and in our top three races, we were so aggressive and so results-oriented that it brought so much transparency to our top three races that those three candidates, within 45 and 30 days of the election itself, fled the ballot rather than fight our fierce transparency, and that is exactly what needs to be done. We need to defend the fundamental principles and values of this party and the platform of this party, which is a very good platform. Yeah. What should the governor do? Right. Well, I, I think the governor should get behind the most robust. You know, Quinn's not going to do it, of course. We need a sea change of, of, of leadership. But uh, the governor should get behind the most robust policies as fast as he possibly can. Look, you and I, we don't believe Illinois has a lot of time left. It's simple math. I mean, for the past year, I've been saying that our five state pension plans are underwater by over $200 billion. And then last fall, Dan Rutherford, the state treasurer, came out with the report, and he said 190. And just recently, the Illinois Policy Institute came out with the number over 200. The gross domestic product of the entire state, what you and I and everybody else, all of us, produce in terms of goods and services in a year is only 644 billion. It's a third of everything produced in a year. We don't have a lot of time. So a governor needs to fundamentally understand the stakes facing his state. And that's why this conversation is so important here today. Because you and I are the most serious people in Illinois politics because fundamentally we understand the stakes. There has to be rapid, real reform of spending, entitlements, Corruption needs to be reined in. And when it's done, hard caps on that spending need to go in place, and we need to start with a hard cap on our property taxes. Yay. When you sent out the email about the taxi cab problem, yes. uh, my little town, Arlington Heights District 214, won the prize yes. for the uh, highest okay. spending. And I asked the district uh, financial supervisor about that, and I don't know if I was snowed or not, but she said taxi cabs are a lot cheaper than school buses when you've got one student to be transported from his neighborhood to a special ed school, for example. Like all District 214 students who are deaf go to John Hersey High School. Um, you know, when you've got one student living 12 miles away, it's cheaper for a taxi than a school bus. And I have to agree with that. But what's the solution? What's the solution to the problem? Okay, first off, uh, District 214, uh, there, there are 890 school districts here in Illinois. Last year, 47 of them used taxi cabs. 
So to comply with the state mandates for special needs children, for vocational education kids and the like, <coughs> the gross majority of about 835 school districts didn't have to use a taxi cab to do it. That's the first response. Here's the second response. District 214 spent $7.2 million since 06 on taxi cabs. It was $6,800 per school day. So here's a quick solution. A transportation voucher to the families. They can all buy new minivans and the taxpayers will save half. <laughs>
triple what, what theirs. And I was just wondering, is that something that, that you would work, that you could work on? Well, I, th I think that's right. I mean, Rahm Emanuel is a part of, of uh, uh, his last budget, uh, put an extra user fee on water. And since most of the suburban areas take city water, I'm sure that's being passed on in our local communities. Look, what we're finding in water districts and sewer districts, those, those entities, because they've been opaque and kind of off the grid of citizen scrutiny, those entities are literally insider spending machines, and you should start digging in to your local sewer and water districts, your mosquito abatement districts, your townships. And look, we're all fired up on Milton Township. You know, Milton Township and the Republican stronghold, I said 10 employees clean off a million dollars of total comp. And the supervisor, you know, makes 82000 a year, and they've got, you know, 36 employees. And then you start digging into Southern Cook County and Thornton Township, and they've got 78 employees, and the supervisor makes $142,000. Okay, so I mean, they're literally, it's Illinois, and here's the frame. Washington, D.C. is corrupt. Springfield's more corrupt. The counties are more corrupt than Springfield, and your local units take the cake. 